Let's take a deep breath when I count to three. One, two, three. I know this is obvious. We just breathe in oxygen and breathe out CO2. Imagine taking CO2 from our breath and making high-value products like petrol and diesel to pump in our cars. Plastics, diapers for babies, even better, to make a world-famous Belgium beer. As a chemical engineer and a computational chemist, I work on the chemistry to make this possible. What really excites me about this chemistry is not that one day I could turn my friend's breath into a beer. I know that would be really cool and handy in a party. Maybe I will have a lot of friends. But what really excites me about this chemistry, what if we take CO2 from this guy, a petrochemical plant which uses fossil fuels? Worldwide petrochemical plants release billions of tons of CO2 into the atmosphere every year. I looked it up. A typical petrochemical plant releases more CO2 than all the seven billion people on the Earth right now. And guess what? There are hundreds of petrochemical plants out there. So can you imagine the impact of this industry in climate change and global warming? So I have been thinking about waste and pollutants for quite some time. In fact, from my high school days. I grew up in Sri Lanka, and on my way to high school, I used to pass by this oil refinery. So from far, I could see how the waste and pollutants release into the atmosphere. After my high school, I moved to Singapore to pursue my university studies to become a chemical engineer. Over there, I had the opportunity to work in a petrochemical plant where I witnessed the waste and pollutants released into the atmosphere. Now, in Belgium, I'm working with waste, of, uh, waste from fossil fuels like CO2. So I always get the question, why can't we get rid of fossil fuels and use renewable energies? It turns out, Fossil fuels form the fundamental building block of our society. They are cheap, abundant, contain a large amount of energy. So even though we desire a world where we no longer need fossil fuels, we are not quite there yet. So can we at least deal with the waste from fossil fuels? Can we consider CO2 as a resource, not as a waste? Buckminster Fuller an American professor famous for his buckyballs, just looks like the chemistry of food, chemis uh, football of chemistry, put it best, uh, when he said, pollution is nothing but the resources we are not harvesting. We allow, we allow them to disperse because we have been ignorant of their value. So using chemistry, we can convert CO2 into high-value products. Well, this sounds like a science fiction or coming up with a really complex process, but actually the way we do is quite simple. CO2 has one carbon and two oxygen atoms. So what are these high-value products like petrol and diesel? So they are essentially long chains of carbon and hydrogen atoms. I guess everyone here played with Legos before, right? So when we play with Legos, we take one Lego block at a time, and we connect these Lego blocks to get a great structure. Can we do the same with CO2? So if we can take the carbon atom from CO2, we can use it as a carbon-1 building block. So we can take these carbon building blocks, connect with hydrogen, and we can get these high-value products like petrol and diesel. Bit of a challenge, because CO2 is very stable meaning it doesn't like to break its carbon and oxygen bonds. So to help with this, we need something called catalyst. So catalyst will activate the CO2, and it will break its carbon and oxygen bonds. So catalysts are materials which increases the speed of reaction without being consumed. I like to think catalyst as the person who helps to register a marriage during your wedding ceremony. So the marriage registrar has a key role in determining how fast the ceremony takes place, 
but not permanently changed because of the ceremony. Unlike the couple, who are permanently changed because of the marriage, sometimes for the better, sometimes for not so better. So the next question comes to our mind, how can we design a catalyst which can help us to convert CO2 into high-value products? Traditionally, scientists synthesize hundreds of materials and do thousands of experiments to find a good catalyst. This is trial and error approach. It takes lots of lots of time, money, and energy. Well, I design catalysts using computers. The aim is to really understand the chemistry happens at atomic level, which is something experiments can't do. So this chemistry is completely safe, and we only need to solve Schrodinger equation. <laughs> so before you ask, Schrodinger is the scientist with a cat in a box. But solving Schrodinger equation is also difficult. Therefore, we can only consider small catalyst structures, and to solve these small catalyst structures, we need giant supercomputers like this. So with the help of these giant supercomputers, we can convert CO2 into high-value products. So we are developing catalysts to convert this. And I hope one day we can sit together and drink a beer which is made from CO2. So does this mean CO2 is good? Should we continue to make more CO2? Well, no. Because we are releasing way too much CO2 into the atmosphere than what we can actually can capture and utilize. So here are two ideas worth sharing. First, there's nothing called waste. Just like the case of CO2, our history is full of examples of things where we once considered it to be a waste, but later we realized there are, there are good resources. Second, it's a message of hope. I know all the news out there about pollution is negative, and, and rightfully so. But that doesn't mean there's no hope. Scientists are working around the clock, and hopefully the solutions are around the corner. Thank you very much. Thank you.